Hello, my friends. Welcome back. This is Brooke here, and I have another video for you. I'm going to be working inside my play along journal. And in this series, I'm working through two handmade art journals so that you guys can get some inspiration and you can see how I take my handmade art journals that a lot of times have embellishments already on the pages and take that for inspiration. But for this page, and the, these pages today, they're pretty plain to start out. And that's kind of exciting when a lot of the pages have stuff going on. So it is a blank slate that you can really do anything um, that you want. Now, a blank page, a white page like this can often be very intimidating. And so that's why on a lot of pages in my art journal, before I even bind them together, I add embellishments. But to leave some space open for yourself, I think is really important so that you can still explore and see what you want to do. So one of these pages here, I believe on the left side is actually a watercolor paper. And that usually inspires me when I see that in the journal to use some watercolor. Now the right side of the page is not watercolor paper, but that does not stop me. Um, it's really fun to see how the water, the liquid, the paint reacts differently to the different kinds of paper. So just because something is not meant for a certain medium or a certain technique does not mean that you can't use it. Those are just guidelines or even what the paper was intended when they made it, when they designed it. But most of the time, I really like to explore different techniques and different mediums and see what really works for me. So my favorite way to use watercolor is probably in a more abstract um, way. I would love to be able to draw more realistically, but that is just not a skill that I come by naturally. And I have not taken the time to really dedicate to um getting better at that. I'm sure if I was more committed to it, then I could see some progress and see some results. So in the end, we can kind of beat ourselves up about what we can't do when it comes to art or in life in general. But when we start to focus on what we can do and start to focus on what we enjoy doing, I think we just get so much more out of the experience. I find that I get so much more out of my art time when I am in the positive mindset, focusing on what I can do, on what I want to do. And then I take other times where I do maybe practice a skill more and try to get better at it. But in doing so, I allow myself the time to be a little bit bad at it, be really bad at it, make ugly things, make things that I don't post for everyone to see or that I kind of just end up um, putting in a journal and closing up. So if your pages are not coming out right away, how you hope that they'll com they're coming out, they're not showstoppers. That's okay. It's all part of this artistic process and it's really a healing process within ourselves too. To be okay with imperfection, to be okay with how everything is just going to turn out. So for example, on these pages, I started with some just abstract um, watercolors, but I thought botanicals would look really fun. So instead of hand drawing them, I used a stencil. Um, I love this stencil and I believe this one's from um, Wow Studios. I will try to, as I always do, link the supplies in the description below so that if you're interested to know what I'm using, look there first. And if I miss something, please let me know and I will find the link for you. I'm adding in just another little bit. I could leave the page as is, but having a little bit of a focal point is fun. This is one of um, the number die cuts, and I know that's from Umwell Studios. And then I'm using some different black and white washi tapes. This is just me trying to have a little bit of um, that number stand out from the background. And I do this in a couple different ways. Oftentimes I'll use paint um, or you could use paper collage under it. Washi tape and masky ta masking tape I think are an awesome option because the adhesive is already there for you. It makes it really easy to 
um, use, and it just stands out a little bit more from the background. But there was already quite a bit going on, so it would have been okay just to put the this number card down on the page itself, but sometimes I like to add just a little bit of something behind it. Looking back on this page now as I'm recording the voiceover, I probably would have left the page alone. Um, but I think that just goes to prove that over time our styles change, our preferences change, um, and we start to do and work in different ways. So I really actually like how this spread turned out. I'm not saying that I shouldn't have added the, that fabric piece. I think it adds a really fun texture onto the page and I really enjoy it. The thing I will say is that I worked in my mustard journal and my teal journal at two different times. So I actually worked in my mustard one from start to finish um, before I even started the teal one. So I really enjoy looking back at these side by side in the video now and seeing some of the differences, seeing some of the similarities, seeing how I took maybe an inspiration on one page, but then I did something different on the other. Um, it just depends. And I noticed that my style has changed a little bit. Um, I've gotten a little bit more simplistic and that's been a conscious choice. So I've been trying to allow myself to not have every page be so busy um, and in allow allowing some of that simplicity, some of that white negative space to shine through. So be aware that over time and over continuous practice, over consistency, that's where you're really going to see the results in your art practice. And that's where you're going to see the growth and the development. That's not me saying one style is better than the other, or even that I like the teal journal better than the mustard journal. But I can just see with a conscious effort of doing something and the consistent practice of doing it, I can see those results. So over time, I know that my style will continue to change and evolve. Okay, so I just did here on these middle pages with this teal journal, I decided since it was watercolor paper, I was going to add some just simple marks. Now that circle punch that was in the middle of my journal, I still wanted that to be the main focal point. And so I didn't do anything too complicated behind it. Okay, so now we're getting started on the second spread here. And this is kind of similar then to the first spread that I did in this journal. So instead of watercolor, I decided to kind of mimic some of the effects of watercolor. And I'm using my um, Neo Color 2s, which are a water soluble um, supply. And water soluble um, mark making tools are definitely one of my favorites because they are so versatile. So um, in this spread, the way that I used them was to mark with them dry on the paper and then add in my wet paintbrush. But you could even see that I took some of the pigment that was then on my brush and um, put it onto the right side of the page. So there's lots of different ways to then spread that pigment around. And these Neo colors are so nice and creamy that the colors really blend and um, flow well together. I'm adding in some white gesso now. I want to kind of blend and blur the edges of um, where the color was, where I blended it with kind of the background. And it's kind of giving me a little bit of a dreamy um, effect. And it's really kind of fun to see. It's a lot softer than a lot of my other pages. And it's fun to see uh, the differences that you can have. Now, as I said, this is a bit softer, more of the edges, you know, are those really curved organic edges. So I decided it would be fun to bring in a um, maybe a more bold focal point. And so I have these little wooden numbers and these are actually, I believe, from the dollar store. And I decided to just paint them with some black gesso. And um, now that they're dry, I'm going to put them on the page here. And I'm going to do kind of a similar technique that I did on the last spread. I'm going to take some washi tapes and add some where it's going to be behind where those numbers are. And it's just going to help it stand out just a little bit more from the background. Collage would have been a great option with some paper, maybe with some text on there. Bring in some pattern onto the page. 
But overall, I'm really happy with the simplicity of this spread. Um, it's, again, very simple, but at the same time, there's enough going on and the blend and the flow of those colors, I think, go really, really pretty together. So um, that's definitely one of my favorite supplies to really explore with. Last up, I'm adding in some little white marks, just a few little highlighted areas. The white marks, I think, always act kind of as those little highlights on the page. I hope that you guys are enjoying this series. We are getting very close to the end here. So if you haven't watched all the weeks yet, the playlist is linked down below and you can go ahead and check out the 30 previous weeks. I hope that you guys are doing awesome and I'll see you next time.